we're about to head up into the Dimbula Museum and we're going to check out the three different floors. Um, one of the floors we're actually going to be able to dress up, which is the bit that I'm excited for. And we've also got an area full of contemporary photographers. Uh, really looking forward to seeing some of them. We've had the likes of Jimi Hendrix come through here as well, which is amazing. And then we've also got the floor dedicated to, to Cameron. So let's go upstairs and let's start to explore some of these um, areas. So we're in Julia's bedroom and one of my favourite aspects of this museum is um, anything that's interactive. So one of my favourite aspects is this particular room. Um, you can go in here and you actually get to try and dress up. So I'm in the lovely little dress up room and what we're going to try and do is I'm actually 
think I'm going to wear this one today because I'm feeling like a little bit of a... Like magic, I've magically transported back into time and we're, we're here in the amazing room where we get to dress up and we get to feel like what it was like during that time of when Julia and Tennyson was, was here and able to kind of wine and dine and circulate through Freshwater Bay. Um, so amazing concept. Also through the other room, when you walk through the other room, we actually get to see some of the, her famous um, portraits. So Brian and Sarah are going to have a little bit of a chat with us and talk a little bit about this particular room. So, you're a Victorian, you're a ghost. I am, I'm, ghost. I am. You're a I think so. Come to life. Isn't this beautiful? I think the green suits me. So <laughs> you look like Mrs. Cameron would love you. She would have you in that studio. <laughs> I hope she wouldn't lock me up for five hours no, like no, she no, did for the maid. No, no, no. That was the maid, no, that was the servant class. That's you, would be, you, you, you would be definitely a lady. You would be something from... The, the, the uh, Arthurian poem by Tennyson, it was of the king. You would be, not Guinevere, I think you would be maybe the Lady of Shalott. Yes, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> So I'm sitting here at Dimbiel Museum with Sarah from the Isle of Wight Guided Tours and also Dr Brian Hint who's the chairman of the museum. So this is basically the Freshwater Circle, the home. Uh, and we're going to hear more about this amazing <laughs> photography museum yes. and where it was aspired and you know, basically a little bit more about the Freshwater Circle. We're very lucky to be sitting here having our delicious coffee in the lovely tea room which is the same room where... Uh, as Mrs. Cameron's dining room, all of the Freshwater Circle, and that was Alfred Tennyson, who lived just up the road, uh, that was G.F. Watts, that was Charles Darwin, who lived next door for a while, Ellen Terry, um, you got Edward Lear, Lewis Carroll, they all sat here and put the, the world right, as we are doing now. Um, it was the, the heartbeat of the Freshwater Circle. Um, the reason that we're so lucky to be here is that this was going to be demolished for um, some hideous concrete block of flats and a band of us who were called amateurs uh, and maniacs and madmen and mad women well all right but we, we what we did we loved the uh, the work of mrs cameron we respected the freshwater circle we did not want to see it die we actually wanted to commemorate it and take it forward um, and that's what we've done. So we saved the house, literally from the demolishers, from the bulldozers that were just about to come in. Um, it's now a charity, so it's, and it's listed by the government, so it's here forever. And also Farringford, which is the other great jewel in the crown, um, that has been preserved by um, a private owner. So we now have this resurrected the two homes of the Freshwater Circle. And there are other places. They used to go for long walks and the, and the beautiful landscape here, which you really cannot beat. Um, they used to have long conversations. They used to go swimming. They used to dance. I mean, the, where you came in, that was Mrs. Cameron's ballroom. That seems quite small. So this but was actually Mrs. Cameron's house. It was her house. Yeah. The reason we fought to save it was it... Actually, it was more than that. It was her home from 1860 to 1875. But more important still, in 1863, for Christmas, her daughter gave her a camera. Now, it's not a tiny something in your mobile phone. This was a very large piece of equipment. And that Julia, the name of the daughter, and her husband, who was a merchant banker, so had some money, uh, they, they knew that, that Julia Margaret Cameron um, had been very interested in photography. She'd gone to country house weekends where it would be actually sort of, um, people would actually experiment with these huge and very expensive cameras and she wanted one of her own. So at the back of this house she took an old chicken house threw out the chickens and turned it into her studio an old coal cellar um, she, she turned that into her developing room and it was here in this house that she did most of her work as a photographer and it was here that she photographed the people of the Freshwater Circle, like Tennyson, 
Uh, and visit visitors like uh, Henry Longfellow, the American poet, um, they were all brought in here, taken into, put in some, she would dress them up in some strange costume and take them into this glass house. And Tennyson would bring these victims down. She and, was and commercial in her thinking. She was very well. commercial. Yeah. The reason that she built the tower here and made it into a much bigger house was the money she made from photography. Mm -hmm. She had her own showrooms in London and Regent Street. She was very keen on her art and craft. All her photographs were priced. A famous subject like Tennyson or Darwin was worth much more than a local child. So her, her main uh, avenue was portraits? That was what she, her she only ever, avenue. Did she ever go into landscape? Because obviously this is such an amazing landscape. Yes, but, but we know that she photographed in the fields because yeah. she had a cart oh, right. and she would bring the camera, because you couldn't lift it, mm -hmm. you'd need something with wheels. But, but everything that survived apart from one photograph in Sri Lanka where she retired to, the only landscape is there and that's of the tea plantation. I mean, she may, well, we know that she took some landscapes, they haven't survived. So all of her photographs are either portraits or um, sort of uh, genre paintings in, photo, in photography. So, you know, she illustrates Shakespeare, she illustrates Tennyson himself, she illustrates uh, Berger, the, she translated the, um, the great German romantic epic Berger into English. Um, and she, she, um, that, yes, yeah, so she, she illustrated from the Bible, illustrated from Homer. So she was trying to do what a fashionable painter does, a portrait painter, but, but in photography. photography. That's what so makes that, her so special. Yeah, she really yeah, kind yeah. of started that revolution of it. It's quite popular now, even in the Thompson's restaurants, we could see some of the, um, yeah. the pictures of the actual food that they created yes, were done in yeah. like an artwork form from yes, the photography. Yes, absolutely. So yes, yeah, I guess this is quite a famous island for kind of photography and art. Well, and worldwide, because... Yeah. Once we saved this house, we had Patty Smith coming here and doing an exhibition um, of largely photographs to do with the Bloomsbury Group and artists and writers in homage to Mrs. Cameron. Annie Leibovitz came and photographed the house for a project. Um, pop stars come here, Robert Plant turned up, and, and the lo lovely man, Dr. Brian May from Queen, um, that he had what, an exhibition and he was uh, doing a talk about his favourite Victorian stereoscopic um, portraits and landscapes. Yeah. Um, so we, we have you know, famous actors, we have academics, we have lots of television. Uh, I no. guess this freshwater circle continues then well, in the modern day era. Because, um, and we have the, the equivalent in terms of pa Seamus Heaney was here, um, Andrew Motion, uh, the ex You had just recently Judy Dench and Camilla. Um, I know, yeah, so I, know, the, know the, I yeah, know, I know, I know. Yeah, we didn't have Judy Dench here, but we have had um, a v various um, famous actresses with, with TV programs yeah. because it's very scenic, as you can see it yourself. Is, it's beautiful, it's beautiful and we lovely views, lovely yeah. views from well, the I'm window. I'm a landscape photographer, so there for we me, are. I when is you when are you going to do your exhibition with uh, us? <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day. I'll have to see out here. I like night time, so I can imagine the beautiful views yeah. here. Yeah. But yeah. you know, portraits. I, I tend to. I love portraits, but it's more. Yeah. Yes, it's, they're yeah. a lot harder to capture people's essence. But she was very fortunate. When you when you have to, they have to sit in front of you for up to five minutes, it's very it's difficult to capture can, their essence. Yeah. Um, but that's what she did. She put them in costume. Um, for one photograph of despair, she put one of her maids. She locked a maid in a cupboard for five hours. This probably would now result in criminal that's charges. <laughs> yeah. But when the poor girl came out, she certainly was despair. Um, <laughs> uh, Ellen Terry, the famous actress, she was sadness. And she, yeah. looks she was married to a man 50 years older than her, so it's probably... Yeah, I'd be sad yeah, too. Briefly, yeah. briefly, <laughs> briefly married to a man. To G.F. Watts, a painter. And, and an, um, an arranged marriage that didn't really work. Yeah, I would say so. But she looks sad, and, and it is called sadness. Oh, and, right. um, yeah, yeah. No, no she, she believed... She was very dramatic. Yeah. She would make her photographs not just a likeness. She wanted to go to the soul and the essence of people. She wanted to capture yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.